tell us a little bit about uh, <coughs> Delivery Hero, and uh, then we're going to chat on the couch. The Perfect. Floor is yours. So I'm Niklas. I'm co-founder and CEO of Delivery Hero. It's an online food ordering platform. Uh, most of you in Germany know us from being Lieferheld or Pizza.de. Uh, so it's an online food platform founded in 2011. Uh, so we've grown the business quite fast. Um, we to date have raised about one billion of capital. Uh, we are in 34, 34 countries across five continents. Most of those countries we are market leader in. So I think 30 or so we are market leader in. Uh, we have 2,500 employees. We have, or we are selling about 2 billion or a bit more than 2 billion of goods per year, which means that we currently deliver about 1 million meals per day to your doors. Um, so that's quickly about Delivery Hero. We still grow very fast. Uh, but the way we see it is that we just got started. Uh, so it's still a fairly sizable business, but it, it's in a very early stage. And what we want to do is that we want to reshape the, or transform the industry of food, and in particular, then food delivery. So today, I think there are around, um, we spend around three years of our time going to the groceries and cooking and preparing food. 20% um, of you think it's quality time, 80% of you don't think it's quality time, and that's what we also want to address. Um, and I think the flawed with the current model or the flawed with the current business is that, um, or industry is that it's a lot of manual processes, there's phone calls, there are inefficient delivery systems, there are no reviews, etc. So that's where we come in to build an online food or platform where you can get your food delivered in a very short time, you can get quality food, you can get good food delivered in under 30 minutes. We are not yet there. We do have delivery under 30 minutes, but not for all restaurants. So that's where we want to come in and change, where you can get a good quality meal very quickly. That's very short about delivery here. I, I guess it will be more later. Thank you. Peter. Hi, I'm Peter van der Does um, of Adyen. The Adyen story started about 15 years ago because the founders of Adyen used to have another company which we saw. And actually selling your company was sort of a depressive event. Um, I know that at the moment of the sale, one of the investors said to me, Peter, drive home carefully because you're going to run into a tree because you're so excited. But actually, I drove home a little bit sad and very slow because being an entrepreneur was much more fun than the years after where uh, we were absorbed by a large company. So what happened? The founders of Adyen, of Adyen had worked together and we regrouped to start a company in 2007. And that company, we wanted to build a payment platform which was much better than everything that was around and we wanted to change the system from within. So what we did is we uh, recruited a few of our uh, former team, the people who we had handpicked and liked most. Now, if you ask one of my investors, what is Adyen? Then the investor will say, Adyen, that is a team of rock stars. They are true rock stars. Recently, we had a dinner where we had the four founders, a few of the early investors, and the, the early few employees. And I looked around and I thought like, no, this doesn't look like a team of rock stars. We are not you two and I'm not Bono, for sure not. Um, what we do is we change the system from within, but we look more like a bunch of misfits, maybe. Um, so I'm sure if you would have asked in the restaurant, would anybody invest in this team? They all would have said like, nah, don't. Um, but we did. And wh why uh, would an investor say we're rock stars? We are the company that services companies like Facebook, Netflix, Spotify, but also in the more in other industries like we do for Vodafone a lot of work, for EasyJet. So most of you here actually have your payment details stored in our system. You don't know me, I know all of you. Um, and uh, um, rest assured, we have very strong uh, uh, agreements that I won't look you up because I have the full pattern. Uh, we cannot share it due to privacy laws. What, uh, how did our journey look like? 
rockstars would our investors say. Why rockstars? Because we always exceeded business plan. Each and every year we did. I looked at the reports which we do. We did from day one monthly flash reports with the main results we achieved and were going to achieve. It is a lie. For the first three years, we never exceeded plan, we underscored. We were taking things more slowly and we wanted to keep the pace with how the business was developing. We have never hired 50 people at one go because we believed you can only double in size. So if you have 10 people, you can grow in a year to 20 and from 20 to 40, we are now 350. But that takes a bit of time to get there. At the last shareholders meeting, one of my I would say most rockstar investor. He is a rockstar. He drives around through London on a, um, on a Ducati monster and he smokes cigars. Um, he told me, Peter, I eat my words. I always said to you, you can grow much quicker. And actually, I think you hit the perfect path. And there's a bit of a lesson in there. Uh, we have always done what we thought ourselves was the right path. Um, as an entrepreneur, you get so much advice as to how you should develop yourself, how you should behave, um, taking even for unicorns being part of a, a sort of a leader board as who has the highest valuation. We always said winning is more important than ego. It doesn't matter. We'll do the right thing. Thank you. Okay. Can sit next to you. <laughs> Peter, um, can you explain to me why is it so hard to grow big in Europe? Why are there so few of you rock stars? Um, I think many Europeans, and I feel very European, uh, you tend to stop. If you can pull out a few million, then why, then why run it any further? Uh, it's, it's a comfortable position. You don't uh, have to worry anymore. You can have a good life. I think it has to do with the fact that we already had a company and we know how we missed it. Okay. Then we got back into it and now we're not, we're just growing a very, very big company. We don't need to do things for the outer world. We just build it for ourselves to create something and we don't have this window as in, oh, if we hit that point, it needs to go. Mm. When you grow bigger, sometimes the founders actually turn out not to be the best CEOs of their companies. What makes a good CEO? From my original plan was to found a company and to move to Brazil and live in uh, Rio. Oh, uh, what happened on the way to that? What happened is that so far uh, I'm still needed. Uh, but the, 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 the position has always been open. We've always tried to attract a lot of talent. Uh, but at this moment, it needs a founder, CEO, and we need to have the, the, the people who have been there from day one to set the right culture, where we actually do something rather than create a company but forget to really build a platform which is different than everything out there. Mm. Your headquarters are in Amsterdam and you grew all over the world and have offices everywhere. How do you find, how do you recruit that talent? If you have uh, people that are very talented, they typically dislike it to work with less talented people. So you have to be very, very explicit about whom you hire, you hire very carefully, fire rapidly if you know that, um, uh, that someone is uh, not the right fit. Um, we call it different, but in essence, we have a no dick policy that if you're a real dick, you're not allowed to work for us, even if you're good. Uh, so we have a team of nice people that like to work together and really try to get something done. Um, and that attracts other talent people. We have had an incident where someone left the company because he wasn't good enough and he referred a friend oh. who is still working for us. Lovely. Um, <laughs> Nicholas, um, as a CEO, I was told like you are a true like, visionary and uh, you have a certain vision, I was told, that in... Uh, 10, 20 years from now, in apartments and houses, buildings, there won't be any kitchens anymore. There's no need for a kitchen anymore in future homes. What are you planning to do here? Um, so, so most people are probably not like me for saying that. Um, and I don't think that all, kitchen, all uh, apartments will have kitchen. But the, the, the fact is that it's super inefficient the way we do it today. Um, and for people who don't like cook, or she, and I do the, the cooking. 
uh, there is no point. I don't know, there are, there are thousands of people around you. In every single apartment, there are thousands of people being good at or, or better at cooking. So it makes no sense that we individually go to the supermarket, we individually drive back to the supermarket, we individually make our cooking, we throw half of it away. It makes absolutely no sense. So I hope that over time that we can have more of share, that there will be more restaurants or individual chefs uh, that can actually provide all of us with, with food, and uh, which basically is a restaurant. Uh, so the, just by creating the availability that you can get a good meal and deliver it in 20 minutes, why would you bother? Okay. So you just take the app and uh, look what's, what's out there. Um, let's talk money a little bit. Um, there's rumors that you're planning the IPO next year. Is that date? There is no date. Uh, so, so we care for building a great business, and uh, uh, most people will ask about IPOs, but for us, that has never been a, a topic, really. Um, of course, th they come to a point when there's a lot of value becoming a public company, um, and when we see that value exceeding the, the effort of getting there, uh, then that's what we will do, uh, and that may be in 16. Mm. We just learned from Peter that like the hire and fire policy is quite common in the business. Did you ever have to have like a really tough decision to make and how's that as a young CEO? Oh yeah, we, we had a lot of tough decisions. Uh, if you build a business with 2,500 people, then, then you will have had to take a lot of tough decisions. Um, and, and of course, that sucks. I don't know, that it's, it's not fun, but I don't think uh, a business should be, be a business has the obligation to do what's best for that business. And uh, it's just my obligation to making sure that we take the tough decisions in order to um, also making sure that the other employees are happy. Uh, I, I don't know, we can also not build a, a, a company of mediocrity. We have to build a company where we provide the culture and then we have to stick to that culture. And if that culture is that there is high passion, high drive, high, um, um, ability to move and progress and move fast, then of course we cannot have people not doing so. Uh, right. If we would, then we would let everyone else down. So it's part of running a business. Okay. Um, since the two of you like really took it off, like you really like made it up to the top, how big is the anxiety that some kind of an Uber company comes and just announces that they're going to deliver food soon. I, I saw Trevor Kalanick in a talk show, and he said this is like something that he'd really like to do. Like you press a button and the food appears. And here's the big thing. They, they, they don't even have kitchens anymore or restaurants. They drive the food all around the city, and once you push the button, the food will come out of the car mm -hmm. delivered to you, already made. It's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. So are you, are you kind of worried about that? I think we always look into what the competitors may do or may not do and, and see what we can learn from them. But in the end, the only thing we can do and the only thing that we can care for is how well are we going to build our business. And as long as we do everything we can in our power to make sure that you will get your food very fast and you will be very happy with the meal that we serve, then that's all we can do. And I think that's, that's quite a lot. Uh, and I think that we sit on integration with restaurants, we sit on the whole delivery fleet or data from it, so therefore we can make sure that you get your food faster than anyone. Of course, if someone actually drives around with the food in the car, it may actually be faster, but then you also take food that will have been traveling in the car for, for an hour or two, um, and I'm not sure what you would prefer. All right. So how is it with you, uh, Peter? Are you worried that all of a sudden there's some, 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 somebody is taking their spot? Not personally, like as a company. At this moment, we are light years ahead of the competition, but of course there is a, there is a battle. And if we don't keep on going and right. moving and innovating, then of course you're, uh, you're going to be uh, losing your position. So that is something which we need to keep in mind every day. And uh, we invest a huge amount also in people swapping from office to office to make sure that we have this unified culture to bring it further rather than that you get small islands of people who want to do repetitive and go to work and do similar work. No, we need to reinvent stuff every day. It is a huge, if you see the investment that we make in people, yeah, we swap them from office to office, we have a management program, we have an Adyen Academy, 
Um, we have a buddy program that if a senior travels, that uh, someone else can travel along, so you have time to chat uh, on the plane. We just launched that a couple of months ago. So we do a lot of things to avoid just that. So you're watching everything. What was your biggest fuck off? Sorry, the biggest? Your biggest fuck off. Um, well, the original, the, if you look at the first flash report, we thought that we could uh, we do a monthly flash report. We did that from day one because we didn't want at the end to be a home for the retired entrepreneur where we could uh, chat about our worries in life. Um, so immediately we took some capital, employees could invest, and if you look the plan on what we invested, none of that was correct. Of the 19 accounts which we had in our original uh, after a few months, of those 19 accounts, 18 are not customer today, and the 19th became customer in 2013. So um, it takes uh, uh, the, the idea that you can tell on day one where you're going. We always stick to the plan, but you have to make modifications. It's not that from day one you know uh, this, this is it, and you're just in execution mode. Yeah, you sounded me a little bit too perfect when you said you're like, yeah, we always keep our goals. And yeah, like but it's not and true. Like that. That's, that that, that yeah. is with hindsight, uh, the investors uh -huh. would claim that that was the case, but it's not true. Yeah. It is a uh, route where we needed to find our way. And regarding hiring, something that doesn't sit well with me, you called it hire and fire. If you see how we hire, I think that's also advice, which uh, for everyone here is we have two people in the board of Altien who speak to every employee. We have 350 employees, nobody has been hired. You go through a process, but you also get to speak to me or one of the four other board members, and then two of us always. So we are very, very carefully in hiring. Mm. To, to ask Nicholas about like um, his, his uh, uh, fuck off, so to speak, it's a little bit difficult because this is actually like kind of your first company, right? And you succeeded in a way. Uh, so, so what was like a day or two that you would like to erase from your? Oh, oh how many of those days? No, we're not <laughs> personal here. I mean, like business. Yeah, I, I think many of those days as well. When you think okay. like, oh, that was a bad decision. Why did we take this route and so on? I think, um, I, I think in general, the biggest mistakes are the ones that I've, have done. Um, not prioritizing uh, the hiring. Um, and, and usually that hits you very badly afterwards. You think that you can do stuff yourself. Yeah. You think that uh, it, this is good enough or let's not do a change now because I'm too busy. Um, and that always hit you, hit you hard afterwards. So I think those are probably general as, as, as a founder and entrepreneur, uh, the biggest learning, um, making sure that you always have the right team and making sure they always keep the right team and develop the right team. Okay, Peter, if uh, we're in the year 2015, I think it's a couple of weeks away that Marty McFly will actually come from the past, from 1985, with his DeLorean time machine and land right here. And if you could like steal his time machine just for a day, and you could go back in time, visit your younger self, what would be the number one advice that you would give to your younger self? Whoa, that's a hard one. I know, I worked um, all night on that question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, because all things I regret, if do you really would have want to miss them? I mean, they're a forming experience. There are things which we have done wrong. We have, we, we in, have our, in our former company, we yeah. did things wrong. We, had, we uh, raised cash and we gave the investors too much rights. So investors had board seats, yes. they had preemptive rights, they had uh, uh, um, all sorts of uh, minimum uh, performance which they were going to make, and those things are threatening for the founders, but also for the first employees that put in money, so it's an unfair system because at the end of the day, the founders can get compensated, the people who run the company, but the early employees who put in money they'll be the ones hurt. Um, I would never do that again. In the end of the day, the company was so successful that it outperformed the contracts which were good for investors, but not good for early employees. Mm. So it, 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 it turned out, it panned out fine, but I would never do that again. I, don't, and I learned from it though. 
uh, I know now why I don't. <laughs> okay. uh, so if you say, uh, w would you give that as advice to your younger self? No, I would say to myself, enjoy that we have uh, a supersonic flights because that's going to disappear <laughs> in the future. Flying will be slower in the future than in the past. Some things uh, you're going to experience as a child and they're going to disappear. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I see. Well, there are so many founders and entrepreneurs and startups uh, sitting out there. So what would be your number one advice to them? Oh, it, it's really hard. I think, I think one which is uh, general is don't, uh, don't waste money. Uh, that's always a bad thing. And it's very easy to say, but it's, it's uh, really don't waste money. I think uh, scale when you know what you're doing or, or when you know how to scale the business. Very true. So, so, so that you don't start adding burn to your business because then you're going to fail with fundraising and you're going to fail with the business and, and you will not be able to survive. So only scale when you know what you're doing and what you're scaling. Um, I think otherwise there are so many learnings like I don't know, hiring learnings, there are so many learnings around I don't know, how to set cultures, etc. But in the end, you have, you have to live through those experiences yourself. Is that you, you kind of have to make those experiences. It's good to listen to people. It's good to listen to people like myself, Peter, other uh, successful entrepreneurs. But in the end, you have to run your own experience and follow your own gut. And hopefully your gut feeling is, is very good because then you're going to be successful. Uh, if not, then you're going to have a problem anyways. Um, so, so I think listen to it, take the advice, but follow what you think. And because of the advice, you might learn more because you realize now I know what we're talking about. Now I know what it meant with culture. Now I know what it meant with, with, with hiring uh, slowly and, and, and firing fast or uh, building a team or so on. Yeah, I agree very strongly on that. Um, scale when you know what you're doing and trust in your own instincts. And if you don't have them and they're not right, you're not going to get there anyway. You cannot get there by combining all the advice. Listen to advice and accept it or ignore it. Um, but at the end of the day, do what you feel is the best thing. Peter, Nicholas, thank you so much that you found your way out here to Munich. And I hope you'll enjoy the Oktoberfest a little bit with us. Um, what I take from this conversation, it's all about the people, hiring the right people, like being being very smart about that, and not burning money, of course, and people do learn coding rather than cooking, because cooking is going to be outdated <laughs> soon. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much. Nicholas, thank you, Peter, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.